Hello, 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 Facebook family. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome again to another Monday of Bridging Through Conversations, beginning to close the gap on conversations some would uh, desire not to have, and then some would have, but then won't tell the full truth about it, okay? So we're going to be uh, telling the truth about it and, uh, and giving you full information about some things that needs to be said, okay? And again, we have uh, Dr. Shalay Wills again with us. And we thank us so very much for coming back. All right, Tasha. <laughs> hey, 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 y'all. What's happening? How how's everybody doing? This is Tasha, aka TC Knows. No, I do not know everything, but I love sharing with you what I do know. And tonight's uh, topic is a is probably a teeth grinder, maybe to some people, <laughs> because of the things that we will discuss. And, you know, we're going to put it out there, the disclaimer, what the things that we say are not facts, but they are all our own personal uh, opinions and experiences. The things that we say, we are not saying to intentionally hurt anybody, but we just want to offer a different perspective and uh, broaden your uh, your mindset and, and so that it can be be open to what we do say. And hopefully that when you watch our show that you will receive something from it tonight. And we are going to be transparent and authentic and unapologetic, just so you know. Just so you know. Just what so about you, Dr. Shalai? <laughs> no, I love it. I'm here for it. I'm here for the transparency, for the authenticity, and, you know, just being real and raw, because oftentimes that does not happen, especially when you're talking to church folks. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, man. Hey, man. Okay, can you do an advertisement before we start on you, Dr. Shalay? Oh, so Dr. Shalay, Dr. S, um, my IG handle is in the little write up down there. So check me out. I do um, a whole monthly conversation on church culture, all different types of topics. So we have one coming up next week actually next tuesday at seven central time and we'll be talking about hypocrisy in the church so y'all know this is this conversation tonight is going to be an excellent springboard for that so all kind of things going on so follow me on ig or on facebook i'd be happy to connect with you oh god every time you say that i just get excited <laughs> I just get so excited. I want to make sure that I be on there. Please, please inbox me. Please, please make sure that I get that invite. Gotcha. So I can be, you know, um, attentive on that because that is like, uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm ready for that. I am right. ready for that. Right. Me <laughs> okay. too. Me too. Yeah. Girl. So are you going to have any guests on there? Or are you just going to be talking about it yourself? So I have three panelists. So there are three other people who are going to be on the conversation. And so it's going to be a good one. I can't wait. I got it. I have a question. Yes. I'm oh, curious. She's going to make you go ahead and start talking about it. Go ahead. I'll try I'm going to try not to. I'm gonna try not to. But this is my question. Since, okay. since the word titles came up, um, I, I would love to know if one of your panelists will have a title. So actually, none of the panelists for next week have a title. Now, mm -hmm. I have had a pastor on. So last month, well, actually, this is still July. So earlier this month, we talked about where are the men in the church. And I did have a pastor on. Um, but normally, it's just, you know, ordinary, regular saints of God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's going to be interesting. And, and the reason why I asked that is because, yeah. you know, our conversation last week, you know, mm -hmm. we kind of touched on titles and what that meant. And I, I shared this on our show a while back where I had an experience with a gentleman who um, I didn't know at the time. He was actually dating uh, someone that is very close to me. And he was visiting our church. And this is when I was going to my home church that I grew up in. And that was the first time I ever seen a bishop with tattoos. Mm. Oh, and I, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Girl, you stepping on me. Look, you stepping on me. No, stepping I, look, on me. 
<laughs> I, I'm not trying to, but that was my first experience because growing up, growing up in a, a Southern Baptist African American church, you don't see those types of things. Right. So he was one of the first individuals that came to our church that had tattoos. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so when I was talking with another member at the church, and I introduced him to the individual by his first name. Mm -hmm. I didn't think nothing of it. I wasn't trying to disrespect him or anything, but that's just how I introduced me because that's how was that's how he was introduced to me because it was not Bishop so and so on mm -hmm. first contact. So, but I didn't know nothing about protocol at that time anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I just was like dangling, really. So when um, and he he rebuked me, not in front of the person that I was introducing him to, just you know, so because they were they enjoyed him being there, they were just you know wanting to know who he was. Mm -hmm. It was like, don't you ever disrespect me like that ever again. And I'm looking at him like, now nah, let me just go ahead and put this in here. Repeat that <laughs> on me. I don't too often use non Sunday school words. <laughs> But I would have that day if I, you know, but I didn't. Because mm -hmm. I was a taken, I was taken aback by that. Right. Because for one, your tone is wrong. Now right. I'm thinking about it. Don't you ever introduce mm -hmm. me like that ever again? I am Bishop so and so. Now that right there. Right. That just don't sit well. And now that I'm older and I've experienced a lot more, I understand that. There are some people that are hooked on titles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like they got to have it across. You know, it's got to be bold and seen in this. You know, but right? Yeah, that was my experience. Right. Um, that was that was a tough one. Yeah, it's so interesting that you say that because I technically am an ordained evangelist like at a church many many years ago i was ordained as an evangelist but since i no longer attend that church i don't use that title ever and one of my friends like whenever she refers to me she refers to me as evangelist and i'll be like i'm just chalet like, like it's not necessary mm -hmm. i don't need a title to validate who i am i get it from a respect point if someone does say it but i'm not going to tell someone <laughs> I mean, right. it's not that serious. Right. In my opinion, for me, for me, it's not that serious. I'm there with you. I'm, I Believe me, I am there with you. The church that I, you know, that I was attending for some time and, and, and my pastor at the time, you know, he, he was there, uh, you know, raised and learning up under him and got, you know, licensed and everything and hadn't got to the ordination part, but still, you know, being licensed. And, you know, he knew my office. He knew the gift that God had called me into as far as a prophet is concerned. And, and that's not something I wave around just all willy nilly. I just don't do that. I'll, it, it can be any title, but I, you know, when I meet people and they're like, you a preacher for real? And I'm like, yeah, that's what God called me to, but that's not something that I, I wave around. Not that I'm saying I'm ashamed of it, but I'm just not, that's not a, something that I just gravitate to, to the point where, oh, you got to call me this so-and-so and so-and-so. Right. So -and -so. No, I'm just Tasha. Right. That's it. I ain't going to say what I want to say on here. I'm going to try <laughs> to keep it clean, but I I get up just like everybody else on, on in the bed, you know. I ain't, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be nice when I say that. <laughs> well, uh, Dr. Chalet, sorry. Um, when you, when, when we were on last week, mm -hmm. I know that we talked about a lot of things, but was there something that we missed that you wanted to talk about with church culture? Um, it's interesting because there was one thing I wrote down because um, one of the things we were talking about was, um, you know, pastors or leaders being bound by finances. And so we were kind of talking about when they may see some things that are out of order, um, they might not say anything because they don't want to upset the financial flow 
of the ministry and I was reading maybe like the next day or a couple of days later and I came across Proverbs 13, 17. And I said I was going to write it down for this because I thought it was so interesting. So in the Passion Translation, it says an undependable messenger causes a lot of trouble, but the trustworthy and wise messengers release healing wherever they go. And I know it doesn't speak specifically to finances, but it just struck me as if if within the church and church culture, if we are so consumed, if there are some of us who are so consumed with titles and position and those kind of things, then you have to be a trustworthy and wise messenger. Because otherwise, the Bible says <laughs> you're going to cause a lot of trouble. Yeah. You're going to cause trouble when you are undependable and unreliable and not stating the facts and not telling the truth simply because you are concerned about the finances or whether or not they're going to vote you out or, you know, some such thing. And so when I read that, I really wanted to make a note and mention that tonight since that came up last week. Yeah, I'm, I am so glad that you that you talked about that because I don't want to go on what you're going to talk about next week, but that's part of, you know, what you're going to talk about next week. You got to be, what is that saying? Your, your, your A's have to be, what is that thing said about the, that saying, that statement where they say your yes have to be a yes and your mm -hmm. no? What, what is that? What, yeah. Yeah, I remember what, it, what you're saying, your yes is yes and your no is yeah. no, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's the life. That's the, um, when you're gonna when when you're gonna hold those 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 titles, and you're gonna be um, even though you don't sometimes people don't intend for this to happen. Even like like with sports people, right? They always say, "I'm not no mentor. I'm trying to put me up to that, mm -hmm. you know, that high standard, you know, and stuff like that." Because I don't consider myself, you know, as being that. But really and truly, you are because yeah. you're in that position, mm -hmm. right? And that's the same way with the leaders, you know, in the in the worship places, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna say that you want to be this, you want to hold this title, you want to hold it so hard that it's written on your forehead, it's <laughs> tattooed on your forehead for everybody. To see. You know, you need to you need to walk in, and, that, and Proverbs is saying the, the the right thing, you know, and people need to go through and and, and search the right scriptures. Right. You know, when they want to walk in these titles, because believe it or not, again, you are very impressionable. Am I saying mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. On people. And mm -hmm. you you want to if you want if you want to hold it, you got to be uh, genuine about it. Right. You got to be genuine about it. Right. Right. To whom much is given, much is required. What you don't, say, don't, girl? Don't want it. Don't want the title and not the responsibility. It. So that's it. Yeah. And you you have to make sure that you do you do uh, hold that responsibility with individuals because it's hard. I tell y'all something. Hope we all all of us know that. But when you're in a position like that, it is really hard when you when you're not in yourself to hold on to some of these things that people try to hold on. It is really hard to do that because you come in contact with so many different people, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and tradition. I'm mean, I'm just going back into back the culture, right? Within our the culture, right? It's hard to hold on to those things because things change, right? right. Mm -hmm. And it don't see. And and if you don't and if you don't change with the change, right? It's like you in the darn stone age mm -hmm. and you're trying to make your, you're trying to make what you said back in the stone age be um, be relevant for what's going on, you right. know, now. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just can't it, it just don't merge in like that. The only thing that merged in like that with, with tradition are hymns mm -hmm. and songs. And you could bring those things. You know, that's that's down through generation. You can keep that. Right. You can keep it going. You can keep it going. But with this 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 leadership thing, um, that there's there has to be some change in there, so that um, so many of the the I know you say you don't like the sheep uh, analogy, but uh, you know I'm I'm, I'm mm -hmm. using. Let me use no, you're good. <laughs> but with the 
people would be scattered, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that should not be done. But the way things are going now with that stronghold on, you know, that title that we're not entitled to have, uh, we're, we're, we're really messing up. Right. I just thought about something as you were talking, um, you know, as we talk about church culture and, you know, kind of across certain denominations, a title is mandatory. Like, you know what I'm saying? You go to some, um, I'm trying to use the word, so I'm not, I'm going to say a conference. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's <laughs> so I'm, good. Not, I'm not picking on any particular denomination. Even though we did a disclaimer. Right. We still need to. Yeah. Okay. Right. But you know, there are certain, so-and-so is this and so-and-so is that. And so, and so it made me think about, you know, I'm a real practical person. So if I think about a job and I get a promotion, mm. then my title might change. Right. 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 So right. That's kind of an elevation that comes th with this promotion. Mm -hmm. I think the difference, though, in the church world is we can be elevated and promoted and it doesn't necessarily have to be a title associated with that because right. Jesus wasn't like, hey, call me king. <laughs> Jesus wasn't like, no. hey, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm the great shepherd. Oh, 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 nope, I'm the bishop, potentate. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm alpha. All he said was, "I am that I am." That's what God I am. Did the I am. All the yeah. extra stuff, his works, yeah. his actions demonstrated who he was, and so maybe for some of us, it should be less about a title. We can be elevated and people just see the works. If 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 you all that, then I'm gonna need you to lay some hands on and some legs come out. I'm gonna <laughs> <don't need> <laughs> see some fruit and yeah. not just be a title. Cause well, yeah. I, I can be something. I can I can say I am something, but if my fruit well, <laughs> come on are not bearing that, then what's the significance of having a title? So right. thank you, Holy Ghost, because that was I was like, make it make sense in my mind, Jesus. And he was yeah. like, you can't because it don't. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it doesn't, you know, and uh, and yeah, I like that. I like that analogy. Yeah. OK. Yeah. It's a hard time for Christians. Much doubt is in the air. Keep the faith. And, that, and that's true. Wait a minute. OK, let me get that chat. And that's true. And I'm glad he said that. Because basically that is what we're what we're heading into with the culture and with the um, with all of the chaos that uh, mm -hmm. that uh, comes with, you know, the worship place. It is hard. It is a hard time for Christians when so much doubt is in the air and doubt come in because of of what the leaders portray. Mm -hmm. You know, within the uh, within the worship places, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you know. It come in, and we and we do have to keep the faith. And that's one thing I ain't lost my faith. God knows I ain't lost. Mm -hmm. my faith. You know, but we have to. And that's way. Uh, you remember last week somebody said, in other words, way through the common sense come in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was holding a conversation with someone uh, not too long ago. Whatever happened to picking up and reading for yourself? Whatever happened to thinking mm -hmm. for yourself? You know, and stuff. Whatever happened to those uh, those things? You know, right, right. I think we got lazy. Whoa, well, yeah, well, well yeah. we got lazy and we got distracted, and I and, and I am including me in the we. Oh well, yeah. Well, yeah, and that, and that and that's true, but you know, uh, I, I think that um, a lot of times we, um, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna say it, but yeah, you're right. A lot of times we do. <laughs> now you we gotta do. say because I want to know what you're trying to say. No, because I, I, I'm just saying, so you don't like the sheep analogy. No, no, that wasn't so. me. That was my friend. My friend doesn't like the sheep analogy. Analogy. Okay. I'm cool with sheep. So you, you go ahead and go. You say it. Yeah, and we because we you know we just foolishly foolish sheep, you know, falling any wind in any wave, you know, whichever way that they go, instead of just, uh, you know, knowing for our, knowing for ourselves and knowing that uh, Bishop Car, I think I said just last week too, Bishop Carton, he sung this song that everything must change, nothing remains the same, which is you know, and, and then it kind of 
counteract what Ecclesiastes say, that nothing changes under the sun. But the only thing about that is that we got to realize, okay, yeah, nothing changes under the sun, but when it come back around, it's totally different. Right. And so I think that if we would begin to understand that concept when it comes to culture and culture and church and tradition, mm -hmm. that okay, yeah, okay, we did it this way, but now let's put a little let's put mm -hmm. a little spin on it now and do it this way, you right. know, this time and stuff. So right. but but the thing is is everybody wants things to stay in that, mm -hmm. you know, that same, you know, same way all the time that boring. That's why we got uh, caught up in, in doing nothing because we were so bored and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we just got caught up in that cycle. Okay. Tasha, go. Look, I'm, I'm listening because I'm learning. I'm taking mental notes of what points have already been made. And, you know, I, I keep thinking you said, um, I think uh, Spirit Love, you said the word change. And I use that word, however, I use it interchangeably with the word transformation. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I always think of the butterfly and how mm -hmm. the butterfly goes through the metamorphosis stage. And 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 Spirit Love, you 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 said something a while ago that I've never really thought of. I, I didn't think of it this way, uh, for that um butterfly when it's a caterpillar and it crawls in the dirt and then it goes to the point of the next phase where it, it goes to a, a, a place, a level where it has to get in a space to get in a cocoon so it can hang and, you know, and the transformation can take place. And you said that when that caterpillar is in the cocoon and is shaking, if that caterp caterpillar is comes out before it's completely transformed into the butterfly, Mm -hmm. One of the wings, you know, may be deformed. Mm -hmm. So that transformation didn't quite completely um, take effect because mm -hmm. maybe the caterpillar that's transforming and knowing it's going into another life form, mm -hmm. literally changing. I mean, the DNA is changing with this, you know, this uh, insect, you know, and it's becoming something else totally different. It come in the world one way. Mm -hmm but it's going to leave another way, another form. So, you know, Dr. S is like, you know, we have, we have, we, in, including me, we have become lazy, you know, and, and it's, it's very challenging when you've been in the church all your life and you have not experienced anything else outside of the church because you don't want to disrupt what you've learned mm. because now you have to unlearn it mm -hmm. i made an example of a wife you know when before she gets married she's single so everything that she learned when she was single she has to unlearn it when she becomes married because she's no longer single mm -hmm. so in the church Sometimes. excuse me so, oh excuse uh, me did that come out yeah you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. a little yeah. bit a little bit. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, I was thinking so hard about that, right? And it just, my mouth just opened. Okay, oh go. Okay, go. I'm sorry. That's go. so funny. So it, it just, for me, it's like you've been in this church. So when you in this one ministry and you thinking, now I'm going to tell you, I thought I was going to be in my home church forever. They were going to roll me down the because I'm leaving this and I'm still a member. No, that did not happen that way. Mm -hmm. It did not happen that way. So everything that I learned there, I found out that some of the things I learned, that ain't what's going on over here. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. How do I... How, that's That could be somebody's question now as far as ch church culture. You know, how do we determine what's in and what's out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I that was a lot, but that was just, yeah, no, no. So you made me think, so there, there's this traveling, um, I don't even know what to call it. It's called Messiah's Mansion. And so somebody, one of my Facebook friends mentioned that he had went. So Parker and I went yesterday and they do um, a life-size representation of the temple of God, uh, the mosaic temple. And so you get to see 
like you know what the the outside looked like and the in the altar for the sacrifice and the labor and, and all of those things and one of like before you went in one of the the things that the tour guide shared with you is what the mosaic temple looked like then what it looked like um solomon's temple looked like and then well the tabernacle solomon's temple and then what it looked like when they rebuilt it you know years and years later after in captivity and if you all remember in the bible it says somewhere in the old testament i'm not gonna remember exactly where probably like nehemiah ezra somewhere in there um but it said that the younger generation was like oh my gosh this is awesome they're rejoicing because they're no longer in captivity and the temple has been rebuilt. But the older saints cried because they were devastated because it didn't look like it used to look. And so seeing the pictures, I've read that scripture, but seeing the pictures of what Solomon's temple looked like compared to the rebuilt, I could see why the old saints was like, <laughs> this is nothing like what we remember, what we saw. But the younger saints were like, this is all we ever know, have ever known. So it's spectacular. And so in regards to, you know, change and transformation and metamorphosis and all that, the older saints couldn't say that the temple wasn't good. It just wasn't what they were used to. It wasn't oh, what they remembered. Yeah. Come on. Say it, was that. Still, it was still the temple. And the young folks were still excited. It wasn't a, like they were like, get out of here with this mess. We don't care nothing about it. They were excited because they had come out of bondage. Come on, y'all. They come out the yep. world. They yep. came out of bondage. Yep. They're, they're singing what they see to be the first time, the representation of this God. Y'all been talking about all this time. I'm excited. Yep. And y'all tripping. Y'all mad? Yep. Uh -huh. But I'm here. I'm mad. But Yeah. Look, basically, I'm going to need you to get it together. So, so yeah. we relate that to now. It might not look like what some of the older saints are used to, but yeah. they're there. They're okay. here. They're yeah. excited. Let, let's yeah. just go with it. We can have our memories. That's good. Mm -hmm. And we can celebrate with the, the newer saints, the new generation. Yeah, how? I like that, I like that analogy. I, I, I really do. like that. That's how? Good. How? Listen, how? when I saw it yesterday, I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. It yeah. was, you said how, Tasha? How? Yes. We how? just, we, we, again, when I say we, I say, I mean a collective. Mm -hmm. The older saints, just like in this example, the older saints, just, it is important for us. So, for example, I have a kitty, a kid. So, he doesn't do things the way that I, when I was 11, how he living and how I was living at 11 is totally different. Now I could sit and make him live a life exactly like I lived at 11, but that would be unfair to him mm -hmm. because he is in this age now. So whatever privileges and, and, and technologies and stuff, I celebrate that with him with boundaries. Right. Same thing for the house of God. Mm -hmm. It might have been one way back in the day and you can share like titus i believe it says talks about the young the older generation mentoring and teaching and talking to the you can share with them but not make them feel bad about what they have now right enjoy it with them learn with them you know i'm not familiar with this i can as an older saint share some stuff with you but as a younger saint you can share some stuff with me like it, 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 it we have to be humble we have to get rid of pride. It doesn't matter if I've been in this 20, 30, 70, however long years. God is still God. And how he might be doing it right now is equally as exciting and, and, and necessary as how he did it 70 years ago. Yeah. So that's that's my two cents. You got well, me like excited. Girl, you have look, okay, come on. I'm getting you bam. I'm I'm high fine. Girl. <laughs> girl, that was right on it. That was so that was such a good analogy of of our young people now because like tasha said you know how do you get them that's how you get them you welcome that stuff in just welcome it in right. mm -hmm. you know some you might be able to tweet it a little bit and bring your little old stuff in there a little bit right just a little bit just but little don't bit. do it but don't do it to the point that you uh that you destroy what that young part what that young person has yes. brought in 
that's yes. going to do the same thing. It's going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because didn't this, the temple serve the same purpose, didn't it? Same purpose. God still showed up. He still showed up. He still showed up. You know, and that's what we have to understand with this, um, with our, our church culture and our this tradition stuff. And again, I just want to, I know I'm, I'm repeating myself. I am not down in tradition. I am right. not. I'm right. not because some tradition is good. Again, like mm -hmm. I said, hymns and songs are good, but some things, some some ways that we do things, you know, within the uh, the, the church, especially with uh, with uh, practices and not and and what we say, you mm -hmm. know, those things need to die. We mm -hmm. need to have a. We need to have, somebody need to do a eulogy on <laughs> some of these traditions. <laughs> because they need to die and we need to bury them. Hold on. Right. You yeah. know, they, they really do. They they need to die, especially with these uh the, the, the young lady that I was telling you about, she's only a now Dana, right? About these uh the the, the the Tyler thing, because our young people are really confused with that too. Mm -hmm. You know, because you think about you, you think about, okay, we have um God, I can't even begin to name how many different titles doggone we have. Some of them I ain't even really, I didn't even know what it was. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have so many different titles that don't, that, that that's not even in the Bible. Okay, I'm just going to say right. that. So right. this title is not even in the Word. Right. You know, all of the gifts that God has given is in the Word of God that, that completes the body, right? So why come you just can't be called teacher like Jesus was called? Right. Servant. How about that? Yeah, servant. You're just a darn servant. That's all that's all, all of us are. Mm -hmm. If you if you hold any kind of uh if you do anything in the worship place, you do anything with God, you are a servant. You're mm -hmm. God's servant to him and to his people. Mm -hmm. That's what you are. Mm -hmm. You are a servant. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm more than happy to carry that name. Right. I don't mind. I don't even mind carrying that name. I know I went to uh, speak at Elaine's church times, and uh, and she knew about the you know the degrees. And I told her, I said I don't want to mention the degrees because the degrees don't mean nothing if you don't have something to say. Mm -hmm. If you don't have something to say to God's people, that degree don't mean not one thing. Right. I don't care how many degrees you have as a matter of fact the degrees that i have is in the storage and i had to go in the other day and dust them off right because they're not gonna do what i need to do for the people right they mm -hmm. have a um i don't even remember what the that's a shame i don't even remember what the initials are you know to the degrees because that's how much it means to me i i enjoyed i enjoyed it because i paid for them right but it's not gonna get what I need to give to the people, right? Mm -hmm. My title, and I will carry it into the day I die, like you said, Shalay, is I am a servant of God. You tattoo that on my head, and I and I just move on with it. Mm -hmm. Look, that's, that's a good you. tattoo to have on your body, period. Right. You know, I'm a servant I of God. Right yeah. Okay. <laughs> but but I want to go back to the example that uh Dr. S was um you know, sharing with us and what kept coming to me when you stated about Parker and, you know, having boundaries and, you know, not being so, well, let me just put it like this. That was church culture then. Mm -hmm. This is church culture now. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was a church culture past, mm -hmm. ch church culture present, mm -hmm. and there will be a church culture future. Right. Because it's going to change. Excuse mm -hmm. me. It's going to transform because it's not like you said, you know, the older people was like, wait a minute, this ain't what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. But the young people were excited because they are no longer in that place of captivity. Right. They, they're not in prison anymore. So they see something new. They feel something new. So mm -hmm. therefore they want to do something new. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. When Spirit Law said, you know, that as far as the songs, you know, traditions, the songs that we have sung, you know, coming from this tradition to that tradition. Yeah, there are a lot of songs that, that have carried over and that, for the most part, will remain. Mm -hmm. But there are some songs that need a eulogy, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to say it because. Girl, you got to bury my songs. <laughs> <laughs> now we 
we in a place now where when we sing something, do something, it has to have meaning. Right. That's right. Yeah. It has to have meaning. It has You're to right. have and not only just meaning, but it has to have love behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. What is your what is our purpose in doing what we do when we do it? Mm -hmm. What is our purpose? Right. Is it just because we want to be seen and hey, I am Tasha TC knows. No. <laughs> Oh, I'm just Tasha. Yeah, that's a name that I go by on Facebook or whatever. But in my family, you you want to talk to my mom? Guess what she gonna say? That's Tasha. Mm -hmm. But she don't say it in disrespect. She said because I'm her daughter and that's my mother and that's who she know me as. Right. But that that example, Doctor S. Man, I wish I could see something like that because go. I mean, look it up because they travel. They travel yeah. around, so it's very possible they'll come your way. Yeah. I need to see that because that's something to actually see. Just, I mean, a life size, like good gracious, like I'm just trying to picture, just trying to imagine it now. And the look on the old, the older generation's faces, like, man, eh. right? No excitement, you know? <laughs> like, right? No excitement. Like, shoot, this is crazy and mad. Why mm -hmm. are you mad? Why are you mad? You mad because the young people got something that they need that's that that they actually want to do and live for because they ain't in captivity no more? Right. Right. What is up with us? You know, that's why Moses had to die. And Joshua <laughs> had to come. <comfort. laughs> Moses had to you die. To say it like that. Like, and like Joshua that. had to come because Moses would have told the people, no, you need to break, you need to tear this thing down. And you need to build it the same way for the people, right? Joshua would have said, "You old folks better get your cane, and you better get your really? um, you better get your walk or whatever you need to get, and come on in this temple and and serve the true and living God." You mm -hmm. know, and that's that's Joshua, and that's our young people. Our young people are Joshua's, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas they, they ain't thinking about that. Stuff. No, you need to go pray for yourself. Didn't the word of God right. say that you pray for yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, and people, you know, and so people are holding on to that thing. That's that's the thing about how people hold on to your um your mind, right? That you have to always come to me to get what you need. No, mm -hmm. you need to pray for yourself. You pray for yourself. And right. that's the, that's a Joshua for you. No, you better go pray for yourself. Right. You better come when when service is over. You better <laughs> That's me. Joshua, mm -hmm. Joshua, come Joshua for you. I don't know how to pray for you. Don't come to me. No. Mm -mm. That's right. No, no, no. But but as long but that that that's the thing about what we was talking about last week, where that you know our leaders, um, you know, in that position, and they think that they can do things like that. Prime example, um, Danny, give me the okay to say something. I'm gonna let somebody else say something to Danny. Give me the okay to say something. You know, go ahead, because I want to say something about what she said today. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. that you had up earlier, I don't know if Dana put that on here where it says yes, Justin Bieber. Um yeah. did she say that comment? Yes. Uh-huh. Did I let me put it back up there? I did not know that because I mean I don't look at TV like that to know these things is happening. So Justin Bieber has been uh talking about uh Jesus to the world. So they talking about him that mad because he talking about Jesus to the world? They mad? Because you know a lot of people don't. You know these churches, girl. They don't want to. They don't want to mix the sec mix mix mm. the secular up uh, with the church, but not realizing that the secular have always been in the church. I mean, right. you know, it has always been in the church, and that's that. Uh, that's that other culture thing, and that mm -hmm. uh, that traditional thing. But mm -hmm. we, secular have always been in there. Where did the piano really come from? Where playing the piano music come from? Where the horns and things came from? You know, if you don't want, if you don't want to mix those things up, you need to pull some of these things out of the church. Just pull it out and just be um, uh, foot stomping. Stomp your hands and stomp your and, feet. Yeah, that just That's that, good. just that. Right. But we we are a mixture of of a lot of different uh, genres of music and stuff within the church, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing because let me tell you something. I don't understand some of these people uh when it come down to music and mm -hmm. 
if you're thinking about going to heaven, I don't know. I don't know really where you want to go. But if you're thinking about going to heaven, uh, from my understanding, you know, okay, I'm going with the culture and how these people want to lay the, lay the music low and, you know, and all that stuff. But from my understanding, the word that I read that everybody want to go by, they say, you know, we believe in God's word. We go strictly by what the word of God says. It ain't going to be nothing up there but singing and shouting and, and having a good time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we got to understand that. And everybody is going to have an opportunity to be in that, right? right? So I don't know why people have this thing about, you know, like music and about, you know, the secular and, the, uh, you know, the the, the the church and stuff. Because it's already there. And it's not going anywhere. Right. And I mean, the music music is biblical like that's all through that's what psalms is psalms are songs yeah and you know it's saying you know the the harp and the timber and the the cymbal and so it's not the instrument it's not the instrument that makes it secular it's your heart behind it that's so, right you that's know what i'm right. saying if you were just playing at the club on saturday <laughs> and then you playing it on sunday then you know it might be a little something but if out of a pure heart to worship, you on the saxophone or the piano or the drums or the tambourine or the whatever, to God be the glory. Yeah. And so. then and then this other thing, so this so we can bring this in now by being transparent, right? Mm -hmm. If you was transparent about who you are and you would let the people know who you are and what you have done, that music would do nothing to you because the you the problem with the music because you thinking about what you would do and where you used to be and stuff. But if you would be transparent about it and just move on and enjoy the music, you'd be all right. You know, if right. we, we, we haven't always been who we are today. Right. right. And I, and I'm just going to be honest. I love all kind of music. It don't even matter. Cause if I hear something, if I hear a word in church and a secular, a secular song go with it, I, that's going to be on my mind. I'm going to say, yeah, that was, yeah, I remember that song. And that, that, the word that they preached today go right with that song, you know, and stuff. So it, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. And it's not, it's not something to, to destroy the way people would think it would be. They would always say, you know, uh, when out there in that secular world, that's going to destroy you and all that, you know, nah, nah, nah. but, but it doesn't, it's the heart. Like you say, mm -hmm. you know, where is your heart? What are right. you, th what are you thinking about up in these pews? Right. right. This is, and this is my, um, I was, while you were uh, speaking uh, spirit love, I was thinking about the song and I don't know if you, uh, you ladies heard it, the uh, song with uh, the Clark sisters and uh, Snoop Dogg. And uh, and when I first heard that, I was like, oh, oh shut Snoop Dogg, he rapping? I was like, listen at this. <laughs> and so I'm like thinking now, like what seasoned person actually heard this song and had a negative thought just right off the bat mm -hmm. because it's Snoop Dogg with the Clark sisters. Yeah, okay, you know let's go back to the Bible, huh? But you know, it was a thing about that, though. It, it, they did have a thing about him mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah, oh, they really? did. Uh huh. When it first yeah. came out, I mean, and, yeah, that's that's a whole other uh, wow. bridge in the yeah. conversation. It's <laughs> serious. It is. But I'm bringing that up because to the to the um to the statement that Dr. S made, you know, what she was saying about Jesus. I think you made the statement. Or it might have been spirit love. But Jesus, he didn't hang out with all saved people in the Bible. Right. Right. No. Did he? Oh. No. Did y'all no. read that anywhere in the Bible that he was always with the saved folk? Not at all. He did. Okay. No, so he, he, we missing the purpose of why Jesus even came, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And and that's my 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 thing also with this, you know, the church, the church culture and what they uh what they're they're uh preaching and what they're saying. So about the word of God and who Jesus is, right? The reason that he came mainly is because we couldn't, the the most, the, the main thing is that we could not keep the law, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and he came over into the New Testament for a new thing and which is grace and which is mercy, right? Mm -hmm. And to do a new thing, to open it up for everybody, regardless of who you are and what you've done and what you're doing. You know, 
because from my understanding, he went to he went to uh he went to uh sinners' houses and stuff. He sat yep. and ate with with sinners and where if you if you around someone like that, it's like that you can't a lot of people don't want to even mingle with people, you know, in that area, right? Because you think that you're sitting on this throne and it's not that's not the way that God mm -hmm. intended for it to be. And so really church culture is really not even church culture mm -hmm. you know if you right. really think about it you know if there if people were, were intending to go by what the uh what, what jesus did with church culture mm -hmm. they missed the mark they missed right. the right. so I, man, I love this topic this is <laughs> yeah yes yeah. totally well, they, they ain't a 10 this up let me see jesus looking for ordinary people i like this one i'm gonna put this one up and that's true you're looking for ordinary people mm -hmm. Who is uh yeah jesus is looking for ordinary people to do extraordinary things period he just needs a right and available heart to mm -hmm. you and and that's true totally agree. And, and like and like you said tasha in the, uh when uh, when, uh uh dr chalet said uh about um you know the, the the young people doing the temple and stuff how do we begin to get there how do we begin to uh to change that culture within our worship places to help them to realize that it hasn't really changed it's just the look just the mm -hmm. outside that looks different but mm -hmm. the inside is the same right. thing right mm -hmm. right and god said that himself when he was talking to Samuel, when when the people pick Saul, God was like, I don't, I don't, I don't look at people like that. I, I'm not looking at the outward appearance. I'm looking at the heart. So why would it be any different now? You know what I'm saying? He's looking at the heart now. That's not, you know, one permission to be. You know, God knows my heart, and we still trying and all of that stuff. That's but true. if your heart is towards God. If you if, if that's your aim, that's your goal, then like we're saying, we'll, we'll keep using a temple example. It doesn't matter if it was Solomon's temple or the rebuilt built temple. It's still temple. God's still going to show up. Let him just be God. I think somebody said that in the comments. Like, just give me Jesus. That's all I want. <laughs> just I just give just Jesus. Give me Jesus. I don't want no silver and gold, but just cool. That song came on today. I was listening to it. Silver yeah. and gold. And, that, and you know what? And that's a good thing. You know, that's a good, that's a good one right there. Because that's what it seemed like, you know, that uh that what people are looking for, the silver gold and the spotlights and you know, of it all, the glamour, you know, of it all. And that is not, you know, what it's about. It's all about what would what do Jesus want us to do? What did he what was his commandment before he even left for us, you know, for us to do? You know, are we, is that what we're doing? Is that what we're putting in our church culture? No. What you're putting in the church culture is, uh, wait a minute, somebody had it on here. It's putting people out of your church and uh, and not letting nobody have a say-so but the leader mm -hmm. and stuff. So, and that's not what it's about. It is not. And again, guys, I'm not downing anybody. I'm just saying that there is a, there is time there's a now is the time for a change i guess that's right, right. we need to we need I to get totally rid agree. of yeah we need to get rid of a lot of things and for what dr chalet is going to be talking about make sure you send me that so i can share that I am. Because <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a really great topic because basically that's what we're talking about now in another you know in another area of it right is that we got to make sure that we be who we say we are mm -hmm. and make sure that we are who we say and that we are working for who we say we are working for right and we and that's being the servant of the most the greatest servant that there's ever been which is christ jesus mm -hmm. you know, and we ought to follow in his footsteps we ought to be imitators of christ right mm -hmm. and uh some of us just not with a lot of us is not doing a good job at it and i'm not excluding myself i'm not excluding myself but sometimes i don't do a good job mm -hmm. but I, that's what we should be working towards you right. know like paul said you know we forget about those things that's behind us right, right. notice what i'm saying Forget about those things that was behind. <laughs> Forget about that old temple, okay? 
and mm -hmm. look towards those things that's you know right. that's ahead of us right mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that we forget about the purpose of it right mm -hmm. paul didn't say you know don't forget don't you don't have to talk about you know your life you know you just pretend like that your life didn't even happen no that is not what he's saying right. he's saying that you make sure that you you merge yourself into the new but you let people know where you came from right mm -hmm. and keep your eyes on the prize right mm -hmm. and that's what god is you know um is beckoning us to do now even with that example that you're talking about you need to send that to us also again that uh about the different the the the, the new and the, the old and the new mm -hmm. you know what about your people we got to think about those things and and move towards that way because that's what jesus wants. that's why jesus came and that's the road that we should be on right now instead of staying stagnated right here we just stagnated and we're not making no uh no progress into way jesus would allow us to be and and another one of the things also is is that the love i think somebody said that too we got to know how to extend out that grace and that that right. love that 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 jesus has, has required us to do instead of thinking about ourselves all the time mm -hmm. that's yeah. all we agree yeah okay guys this was good guys y'all know y'all know it's almost the clock we did this was good do we have any y'all have any last words that you want to say about this because this culture thing we could just go on and on and on and on you know about this because it's really good and it's relevant you know mm -hmm. now to talk about it you know especially in what we've gone through and the change that the churches are getting are going through right now mm -hmm. uh if they would take some uh advice they would move a little farther out of tradition right. and away from that church coach you mm -hmm. know and stuff and and do something new right That's I, agree. My I agree change transformation all of that that is necessary like i love the example that you all gave about the butterfly you have to grow like if you have a, a baby and they're been on this earth for nine years and they still look like a two-year-old we would be concerned we would be going to the doctors we would be trying to figure out what the problem is oh would, lord you know it's called in specialists like we would do all of this type of stuff because that's unusual that's yeah. not natural come <laughs> on not grow, to not change to not you know transform right and the church is no different we are the body of christ so if we have been around all of these centuries and we're still the exact same in some ways that are not beneficial to the body then that's a problem and we need to change. We need to consider doing things a little bit differently. And it's it's okay. <laughs> it is okay. It's okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's that's good. I like that. You you did throw some great analogies and some metaphors up your girl. Look at you. <laughs> Thank you. That's how I think. Like I'm a very visual thinker, so I yeah. have to like put it put it in a visual, and it makes so much sense to me. Uh, I, I like that. If you hear it again, I'm just letting you know that I probably will use it again. Okay. <laughs> okay just just go ahead go. and give me permission. You give me permission. You got it. Okay. You thank, got you. It. Thank, go you. For it. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, Tosh. Look, I, all I can say is, is you know, that culture back then, leave it back there. You know, there's some deformity going on in the church culture today. You know, Dr. S said the body and we are the body and if my arm if my left arm is bigger than my right arm then something is wrong mm -hmm. you know i know that there are going to be some what's the word i'm looking for i don't want to everything won't always be the same mm -hmm. There are going to be some difference differences, but the tradition, if we hold on to it, and the and I'm talking about the traditions that will cripple us. Mm -hmm. So we have to get rid of the deformity, and we, but we have to know where to start first. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. it, it's a good starting place. Is a good starting place. So thank you, Dr. S, for tonight's conversation and just for 
doing doing your lives and thank you for stepping out of the box you yes I, I look, they trying to, they trying to put me back in the box now i'm like no nah, i'm out now it's over <laughs> ah, you know it's kind of hard out. you know you know that mat that thing the metaphor that i use about the um the uh, metamorphosis of the butterfly it's hard for the butterfly to go back in the cocoon now mm -hmm. yeah, yeah as long as you don't get the form don't you know, let nobody help you to come out you're gonna right. be all right and you're gonna fly free and it's gonna be hard for you to go back into that cocoon it's not uh look it's gonna be hard to try to go back to being a caterpillar right yeah, yeah, you, no you can't go backwards you had to go you forward can't. It's, can't. It's, it's hard once you step out you there's no going back mm -hmm. you know and, and if you do go back you you're going to deform yourself see that major deformity that's right and that's not that's, right. that's not what we want god wants us to move forward yeah right. what he desires for us to do for you. On this earth guys thank you so so mm -hmm. very much for coming out you're gonna have to come to see us again okay okay you know, anytime come you're gonna have to come in if if you don't get a lot of, i'm praying that you get a lot of views you share when you start your live and you be live right yes okay share it so we can share okay, okay. so um so you can get a lot of views on that because that's going to be a great topic someone living in something that's not showing what they living what they say they live mm -hmm. right and uh and we're gonna that that we're gonna be praying for you on that and i'm gonna be in oh, that thank list. you and I'll probably be tearing up your comments, girl. Please, I'll probably be coming out of my chair. I'll come be coming on. out of my chair. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes, telling you, you guys. Too. I love it. Was, I'm telling you guys, this is down my aisle. And I'm, I'm telling you, there's no turning back. And I don't, you know, I'm, I am unapologetic about who I am. And, and I don't, I'm just me. Okay. Right. And I love That's me. That's right. all we can be. That's all well, we I will make. say this one last thing. Change is hard, period. It is. But it's necessary. Thank you. It is necessary. What's that song that, that Dennis sang, uh, Tasha? Uh, it was necessary. It was necessary, mm -hmm. yeah. It was necessary. You went through some things in your life and you that was tough for you to go through, but it was necessary. And look where God has brought you right now where you are right now and there's still some growing you mm -hmm. know that he has for us but it was necessary what we went through and where we are right now Amen. in our life yes no going back that's right diana all right now okay guys uh i love you guys and there's nothing that you can do about it but love me back and again dr Slay williams thank you thank you thank you're you welcome. so very much and you're not going to be able to get rid of tasha and i now <laughs> <laughs> Like Not I tell our other guests, like I tell our other guests, this is it. You, we're, yeah, it. Okay, so. I'm so glad, so excited to be reconnected. That's, it's yes, awesome. yes, I, I am, and I'm begin every time I look at you. You do, you you coming back to me every okay. time. Every time I think about it, yeah, I say okay, I'm getting there. You know, I'm seasoned. Okay, seasoned. And that's all right. Season is good. Season is good. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so so very much. This is Spirit Love Diane. This is Tasha, aka TC Knows. All right, Doctor Shalay. Doctor S here. <laughs> all right. Bye bye, guys. Love you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Mm-hmm.